I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Big Dave? I'm doing good. I've been speaking too much. You know that, right? You hear my voice? Yeah. <laughs> my poor voice. I have to, I don't know. I got to figure out a way to maintain that voice. <laughs> so this week, our topic is personal development. Today's Connection Thursday, we are discussing personal versus spiritual development. So I think it's been a pretty good week on personal development. I think I like the, the points of view. But as I was researching today's episode, I found the definition of spiritual development. It goes, spiritual development in essence is to believe in something beyond the material universe and to develop an awareness of realities beyond the confines of time and space. Now, David, I want to refer this back to you, but my experience in my personal uh spiritual and my spiritual development, not my personal development, has had nothing to do with what I believed. In fact, it would be my beliefs that for years would actually hold me back. What are your thoughts on the difference before we go? I want to see what your thoughts are in the beginning of the episode and at the end of the episode, the difference between personal and spiritual development. Yeah, I, I think that to me was the biggest reason why I didn't want to start personal development because i believed that they were both the same thing. And that also was kind of something that held me back from even looking at it, dabbling at it, or even wanting to consider listening to it. So that's honestly, cause you gotta be ready to listen. Right? So in my experience, like I said, my spiritual development had nothing to do with what I believed. In fact, it would be my beliefs that for years would hold me back in my experience. And this is my experience. You cannot advance spiritually through belief. Because belief sets expectations, it will hold you back. One must experience the spiritual to know. And I will discuss this more um, in future episodes. But first, let us take a look at today's Connection Thursday subject of personal development versus spiritual development. So spiritual development grows out of daily, moment-to-moment practice. The ability to step in to this practice is tied directly to one's personal development. Every human being is born in spiritual growth. The small child learns life skills minus fear. The child has faith. They will get their diaper changed and they will get fed. They have faith that if they keep trying, they can roll over, eventually crawl, stand on their two legs, and be able to walk. Spiritual development, spiritual growth is executed through faith. Faith is the connection of the creation mind, heart, spirit. It's the connection to God, the universe, and source. As So as a child is they're born in faith, do you have anything you want to touch on that? No, no, no. I, I think that's the concept that I, I think the other day you kind of mentioned, and I forgot that we kind of went away from it and we're coming back to it. So that that was something that I've completely forgot. So as the, think about this, as the child grows, they are open and their imagination runs wild. They can be whoever they desire to be in that very moment. The child in their spiritual development is fearless and open. They play with any child regardless of race, gender, religion, or status. The child has faith, and in their spiritual connection, they become connected to other children. The small child in their spiritual development are not bound by time. They can focus for hours playing a game or playing make-believe, or just playing in the park. The small child is not worried about yesterday, nor are they in fear of tomorrow. They are in their spiritual development in being. They are present. But as that small child begins school, 
As their stage one of development, impulsive mind comes to a close, the child shifts out of faith, out of their spiritual development, and they begin to experience worry, doubt, hesitation as they begin to experience fear. You understand that transition? Yeah. So if we look at it, the human being's actually born in their spiritual development. They're in their spiritual growth because spiritual growth must happen in faith, not belief, mm -hmm. not in hope. It's in faith. So now the child, as this, they go through this change, the child now enters this new stage of development, the second stage of development, imperial mind. Now the worry that the worry becomes real. They worry they will not be accepted. They work hard to make their tribe happy, to win their tribe's approval. No longer do they have faith in themselves. The whole day is about fitting in the tribe, being liked, and avoiding scary people, people that are different from their tribe. The child progresses through this second stage, gathering wins and gathering losses. And these experiences, Along with the constant cultural programming, the child now has their identity set. They now become completely cut off from their spiritual development. You understand yeah. that, correct? So as the child now, a teenager, becoming a young adult, enters their stage of development, which will be stage three socialized mind, they have a set identity. And this comes with a set belief system, set perception of the world, set expectations of how this world should be. And this set identity is driven by the programs held in mind with that little voice dictating their behavior. The child, now a young adult, is set to play out the role in this lifetime. They have a set of programs with set the identity. They are now programmed into the tribe. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? Well, this identity has self-esteem. This part of the identity will tell you or tell them what they are capable of and what they cannot be. They have self-worth. This part of the identity will dictate what they are worthy of in all five life categories. In career, what work they should do and what level they should be. In finances, how much they are money they should make and how much they do or do not deserve or are worthy of. Health, this sets their habits, how they will take care of their health and how they should feel and what they are worthy of feeling. In relationships, self-worth sets what they deserve in their relationships, what they're worthy of in relationship. And their personal development and spiritual development, self-worth sets their search outside themselves for something, anything that will make them happy. And this also can set their relationship with God. If they feel unworthy, they feel like they're a sinner, they will live in guilt they do not feel worthy of God. And this brings us to self-image. This part of the identity sets how you believe the world sees you. If you change anything, you will experience what is called imposter syndrome and snap back to the self-image that was programmed in mind. This is also how you view yourself. The self-image is how you see yourself. In those quiet moments, that you look at yourself in the mirror, the self-image held in mind will spark a story. In this state, it really doesn't matter what the reflection is telling you. You already have a set story of who you are. You see, the individual that went through this process is now programmed to live in the valley. Every human being goes through this process on one level or another. And it's this process that sets the human's predominant energy, their vibration, and their state of consciousness. This is all determined by the programs held in mind. The human being is hardwired for behavior. Behavior is dictated by what is held in mind. 
Your thoughts, David? Yeah, I, I think it's important because I know as people listen to this, they think, okay, well, I was a child, this child, that. That follows us a lot further than people, you know, want to acknowledge or even realize because I could remember some of the, the stuff that was told to me as a in, in elementary. I mean, me in my mid 20s finding out that that's not true. You know, it stayed with me that long and it's curved my path on what I was thought I was able to do, things that I was willing to try and stuff like that, because I that's not me. That's not my body. That's I'm not smart. I'm lazy and whatever. And then after that kind of blew up, I was like, man, I could have done those things super easy years ago. But I didn't know that until, like I said, mid 20s. Because you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Your perception through this programming is set and that sets your expectations. And that self-esteem, self-image and self-worth is driving your behavior. And this is what it's like to live in the valley. Now, let's talk about the valley a little. The valley is not evil. I got to get that clear to everybody. Each of us is programmed into the valley. It's simply your comfort zone. It's when we get stuck in the valley that we are driven by our habits, programs, belief systems to play the role of the identity set when we were younger. This identity is the ego. The ego is attracted to other egos of similar programming. The ego works to make sure you do not deviate from this programming. It accomplishes this by keeping you in want. That want is tied to your past or in fear of what could happen in the future. The want of approval keeps you striving for success, a need to be seen as special by the other egos in the valley. The want to belong drives you to behave in alignment to the tribe, the group, so you feel you are a part of something. The ego doesn't care if this behavior is bad for you or even wrong. It only cares that you fit in and are part of something. The want to control drives the ego to defend its programs against other egos that are different. Programs that are not in alignment will cause the want of control, and this drives behavior in defend and attack. And we have war, split belief systems, both sides stuck in their perception and expectation of how the other side should be. And then the want of security locks the ego in the valley, in fear, creating a state of restriction. These fears prevent connection to the spirit, prevents personal development, prevents love, joy, and peace. Every human being is in search of one thing, love, joy, and peace. Everything you do in your life has a, something connected to that. The challenge is in the valley, that's called happiness. See, in the valley, the ego builds that strength and it builds it through other egos. It builds it through conflict and it builds it through its main programs. The ego's main programs of resentment, regret, and fear. So the ego experiences conflict with other egos that are different. These conflicts create the want of control. The ego defends and attacks the other ego. This is conflict. The conflict is what caused the spark of reaction. This is what causes us to defend and attack. Now the conflict is then stored away for future use. This actually puts your past conflicts into the present and the valley grows strong. So unresolved conflicts go into the resentment program. This activates in you frustration connected to one or more of the wants, then behavior that is driven in anger. And this is all held together by the ego in pride and justification. Now, unresolved conflicts in relationship with others or yourself is stored in the regret program. This brings a state of depression with sadness, despair, and guilt. Behavior also will become depressed. This is where we have addiction and the ego will create a feeling of hopelessness. The ego cannot survive any type of personal development and the ego cannot survive 
spiritual connection. So the ego turns God into a story of fear, a story of our God. This creates fear of other egos and their gods. And ego, the ego is terrified and must kill these other egos, creating irrational stories of separation, us against them. That's how the ego uses fear to keep you from leaving the valley. If you should attempt to leave, the ego will gather other egos in the valley to stop you. The ego will create stories to cause doubt, make you worried, and push you to put off, hesitate, doing whatever it takes to leave. No, the valley is not evil. It is the comfort zone. But know this, no one was born to stay and live in the valley. Each of us was programmed into the valley and you are not meant to stay in the valley. Do you have questions on that? Do you understand it? Did I make it clear? Yeah, no, I think, because I think of one of my friends from there, it, it, it's that tug that you know that you're not doing what is truly making you happy or what is supposed to be in your path because of programs. Uh, you look out for your family and then they keep on going against you, you know? They keep on, no, you got to stay here. You can't leave. You can't go after this job. You can't leave us hanging. All these things to pull you back, even though it's not the right thing that you should do. And I think that's the big thing, the the belief and the knowing that you have versus the programs that you listen to. It's that constant tug of war going back and forth. Yep. Because, you know, we talked about the child is born in spiritual development. This week we discussed personal development, right? And Personal development simply is this process of personal growth. And what you just said, David, if you look closely at yourself and really are honest with yourself, you will see you are looking to grow. It's our human nature. That's the tug that you're talking about. Here we see life through our programs with something inside us tell us we're not supposed to be doing this or we're supposed to be doing something else or we're not supposed to be suffering or struggling. Mm -hmm. And that's that aim when we talk about the purpose. Every purpose is born into the aim to expand. We're not supposed to be in the restriction energy of the valley. Every human being on the planet functions and operates exactly the same. What differentiates us is our state of consciousness or what is called your predominant energy. And this energy is determined by what programming you hold in mind. So some in the valley live in higher red zone energies. They hold programs in mind that are accumulated with these higher energies. Maybe desire, that 125 energy, anger, that 150 energy, or pride, that 175 energy. These individuals' predominant energy builds a lot of resentment. That's what it builds because they're always living in conflict. Others in the valley may live in a predominant depressive energies, 75 grief, 50 apathy, 30 guilt, even below 30 shame. This predominant energy builds regret. And this is what brings on addiction and depression. While others in the valley may predominantly live stressed out, anxious, and worried. This predominant energy is in fear. And it builds that energy of anxiety with irrational behavior. The valley's red zone energies create this state of restriction and the base energy is always fear. So that's, that's what happens. It's not, you know, that's why you guys got to study these energies because there's different intensities for each energy. And you have to know that fear can be outright terrified or a little doubt. Mm -hmm. Same same energy. But you also kind of want to know your predominant energy. It's very easy to tell. In your life, do you live in a lot of resentment? Or in your life, do you live in a lot of depression? In your life, do you live in a lot of anxiety? What is the predominant one? Because that's the programming that you carry. So as one begins personal development, they are moving out of the valley to the base of the mountain. Now, this changes your energy. So you're moving out of the red zone energies into the green zone energy 200 courage. Now, the person will begin to climb 
with the ultimate goal, love, joy, and peace. We're always looking for those higher states. We think if we become a million millionaire, we'll be happy and we'll live in joy. We think we find that perfect person, we're going to live in love and experience love. And we think if we do everything right, we'll find God and we'll live in peace. And it's a search outside ourselves. But that is the true inner search for all human beings, whether they know it or not. Every single goal has an inner search. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, the individual who comes to the comes to the base of the mountain will fall and hopefully they get back up again. When you fall, this is the ego of the valley creating the tether to pull you down. Now, this is important. If the individual has proper instruction, they will move from that base to under courage, leaving the valley to the mountain, and they will begin the process of personal growth. This is the beginning of changing their level of consciousness or their predominant energy. And this is accomplished through letting go of old beliefs, old programs, old habits. In other words, releasing the old identity and building new skills, new habits, new programs that drive you up the mountain. This is changing the identity. In other words, when you do this, and this is what you're going through right now, David, as your identity is shifting, you will see a change in your self-esteem, your self-worth, and your self-image. Yeah. Absolutely cannot, has to. But, and I will tell you this on your journey, and I'll tell everybody listening on their journey, proper instruction in this stage is essential. You cannot change that identity by creating or trying to overlie new skills, new habits, new actions. You have to let go of the old programs or you will snap back and return to the valley. Also, you must understand this on your climb. Very important for everybody listening that the boulders on your path, the conflicts on your path of your climb are not there to stop you. They are actually there to propel you. You have a boulder on your path because there's something that must be let go. That's how you change the vibration. That's how you change the consciousness. That's how you raise your life. You're letting go of the old identity. Mm -hmm. Every time you let go, you're releasing that boulder. So to deal with the boulders, the individual must move their energy from that 200 base courage into 250 neutrality. Neutrality energies, if you look at those energies, is the energy of transformation. Why? Because as that boulder is sitting there, you become flexible. You become open. You act in integrity, which means you have a conflict. You're not happy. Something's blocking your path, but you're still acting in integrity, and you become explorative. What this does, this destroys the boulder. That's conflict resolution. It destroys the boulder on your path and raises your consciousness. Do you understand that process, David? Because it's essential. Yeah, I, I think that's what a lot of people try to do. Like uh, you see it now big time with like um, fitness and stuff where people replace the gym as their kind of escape instead of a healthy replacement for whatever program or whatever it was. It's like they're numbing option. And that's when things like that become just as big of a, an addiction, you know, cause it's not fixing anything. You, you leave the gym, you come back, you felt good. And then you're back to the same programs, the same habits, same thing. So a lot of people think that they can kind of escape to it without having to deal with it. And that's what me and you call putting your head in the sand all the time, you know, just trying to yeah, ignore it. And eventually it has to come back up. You have to release the programming that we just talked about that the child went through. And you can only do that when a program is activated. Guess when your program activates people? When there's a boulder sitting in your path. That's the conflict. Now, when you master personal development, what does that look like? This is measurable, people. You master personal development when you enter a full stage four of development self-authoring mind. To do this, 
all five life categories must be self-authored. Career, finance, health, relationships, and your personal development must be self-authored. You, When you do that, you enter an entirely new state of consciousness. Your predominant energy now is 310 willingness. This is an important energy because on 310 willingness, this is the first summit of the mountain. In this state, look at those energies. You are optimistic. But the most important thing in that state is you are now willing to change, which means in that energy, you are open to shift. You are ready to listen, you are willing to learn, and you are able to do. You are able to work on yourself, deal with conflict resolution. And this is where, when you achieve that summit, when you achieve stage four of development, this is where personal development ends. It's over. There's nothing else to do. You know why? You've already self-authored your life. You already got the habit set. You already got the skill set. You have finished personal development. And it's a great stage to be on. Yet there's more. Very few people ever continue the climb after that. It's hard to reach that stage. Not a large, large percentage reaches that stage for that first summit. But with Dr. Keegan's and Dr. Leahy's research, only 1% ever reach the next summit. It's very low, and here's why. To continue the climb, the individual must now move into spiritual development. This is very different. This is the process when the ego is losing its control. The individual, now listen to me carefully, when you are moving, from that stage four to stage five, which is called interconnected mind, when are you moving from that first summit to the second summit? You are no longer in personal development. You are now in spiritual development. The individual on that path no longer is focused on improved physical health. They've already created a programming. Their health is automatic. They're not focused on more money. Money is not their driving force anymore. They're not focused on more knowledge. They want more experience and knowing. They're not focused on more skills. They're not trying to develop new skills. And they're not focused on their status or happiness. They stop. Yeah, it just, it's just not there. That's the only way I can explain it. See, the climb on the mountain for this individual Heading to the second summit is now all about one thing, living life in process. No more resentment or regret, no more expectations or stress in worry, doubt, and anxiety. See, the individual who sits on the first summit of the mountain is very advanced. They've mastered personal development in that full stage four, but they have to understand they now must again become a beginner. Mm-hmm. Literally, if you're going to go from stage four to stage five or from the first summit to the second summit, you literally must become a beginner as they set out on the next stage of the journey, the stage five of development, interconnected mind. This is a completely new path. It's about finding the now, raising vibration. You automatically slow down. And the only skill you have, you're not looking to develop skill because you have developed the skill of conflict resolution. And this puts that individual in predominant energy of 350 acceptance. In this state of understanding, well-being, which means their connected body, mind, life experience, and it puts them in a state of surrender. This brings them to that second sum of the mountain, 350 acceptance energies and the 400 reason energy. Here, the eagle can no longer assume conscious mind control. And one can actually live in process and embrace life. And I have found that no one can enter this summit without attaining the first summit. Without, you can't go into stage five without mastering stage four, all five life categories. Personal development moves you 
out of the valley onto the mountain. Spiritual development moves you up the mountain, crossing that threshold, bringing you closer to the light, further from the shadow of the valley. That's the difference between the two. Now, of course, personal development can have spiritual practices, but it's completely different. Spiritual development is done all day long, all moments long. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Being in process means you're in the now, you're present, you're working on it. And spiritual development is about living in conflict resolution. You just resolve it, boom, resolve it, boom. And it becomes a skill on this summit, which a skill means that it's a habit. Mm -hmm. It happens automatically. You don't have to think about it. Now, David, I'm sure you have questions on personal development versus spiritual development. Give me your thoughts on this. It's kind of a heavy subject, I know. Yeah, I, I think that's something that it's good for people to understand. But like we've said many, many episodes, it may not make sense until you experience it and create that knowing to it. Because going into personal development, for me, especially if you're doing it younger, I don't really have much exposure because I've had it. You know, my mom listened to like Tony Robbins in the car taking us to school when I was younger and all this stuff, but none of that made sense to me. And even when I got older, I was like, this is just that self-help crap. You know, to me, it didn't make any sense. But when you start personal development and then start seeing how your daily life starts to get better. And I just mean by you got more time in the morning, you're going to sleep a little bit better. All these small little things that are like kind of superficial, you know? then you start to realize that maybe I could change the things that are inside, you know, the things that mean more than just the outside. And that, that was the transition for me kind of when I started to understand that to see, okay, if I work on this, this changes that. And then when I realized that, like you said, spiritual stuff has nothing to do with the personal development. And that's also what started to kind of blow up my belief system and religion and things that I was taught there because I was scared to, I always thought I was going to be in trouble or my family was going to look at me differently and do all this stuff. But then that kind of goes out the window when you start to see how it changes your life. So for me, I think it's experience it first in the personal and stop trying to focus on both. So many people try to go on both. Yeah. And I think that's the issue. I was like, I'm going to meditate and I'm a, you know, lights and stars and whatever. And meditation is great. And then worship is great, you know, but you can't, here's the thing. I can even take this a little bit deeper. So Jesus, this is what he taught to enter the kingdom of heaven. You must be childlike. What does that mean? Childlike is a state So the child we talked about, remember, born in the spiritual development, they're born in what's called a state with the brain operating in what's called a theta frequency. That's connection to spirit. Well, guess what stage five is? Guess what the second summit is? The same frequency as a small child. You no longer are trapped. You are living just like the small child. You live in faith. You don't try to do this. You're not trying to do anything. Your being. And so this has been taught by the great spiritual masters, but nobody's kind of broken it down where personal development has to lead to spiritual development. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing. You can pray and pray and pray. And if you live in the valley, you're not going to get your prayers because you can't. God can't work through Fear. He's getting a busy signal. So, when you, when you yes, you build, you build your reality through your vibration. So you could pray for this or pray for that. And here's what happens to a lot of people. I believe in prayer and I believe it's powerful. And they pray for something they want to happen in their life. And then all of a sudden in their life, this boulder appears, this conflict appears, and they think, oh my God, it's gotten worse. No, God brought that conflict and that boulder into your life because that's what you need to overcome so you can get what you prayed for. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different way of looking at life. And until you get there, it is very hard to teach. Everybody needs to focus on moving to that first summit, getting all five life categories self-authored. That's got to be your first focus. Don't you want to write your own script? The human being, I'm a human being, you're a human being. 
The human being is hardwired for behavior. Behavior is dictated by what's held in mind. 95% of that behavior is automatic all day long. The difference, again, in each human being is their level of consciousness. That's their level of behavior. That's their programming. So you want to first reprogram your own mind. And the other part just comes. Mm -hmm. But you do have to, the challenge that people I find, because I have very high level clients that hit full stage four or close to full stage four. The one category that keeps people out, by the way, is relationship. I'll talk more about that in coming weeks. That's the one category that keeps people stuck. It's a tough category and we'll talk about it. But here's the other piece. You completely have to be a beginner again. And you have to, so here you, you've been working so hard. I set the goal and I do this, I drive this, I do that. And you just, you, it doesn't work. You have to become a beginner again. And, you, and that means it's another level of ready to listen, willing to learn and able to do. I find out when people hit stage four, they got to stay there for a while. They have to, they have to enjoy it. Get <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah. Because you know, by staying there, think about it. If you got your diet and exercise program, you don't ever worry about it again. I'm not worried about my diet and exercise ever. Why would I? And if you got your 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 morning routine program, you don't have to think about it. It's automatic. Why why you when it's programmed, your behavior is being driven. I don't have to worry about getting up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Very rarely does my alarm go off. I don't have to worry about going to the gym. I don't have to worry about doing my green focus power. I don't have to worry about my process when I, and why? Mm -hmm. Because it's programmed. That's what you want to get to. Yeah. And to do that, you have to have proper instruction. The boulders are not your enemy. The conflict is not stopping you. It's there to propel you. It's there for a reason. God can't work through fear. So what does God do? He puts something in front of you that you have to overcome. And what does that do? Boom. Raises your vibration. Got anything else, David? I went over. I went on a tangent. No, no, no. I think that's a, a good one. I think uh, that was a tangent. A lot one. of people who are starting <laughs> for sure. Oh, I know. I love screwing people up. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is the greatest shift on the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.